Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Precisionary Instruments webinar. We are happy to host our guest speaker today, Catherine McLeod, um, to talk about frozen section procedure and technique, where she'll take you through a step-by-step -step procedure for how to section frozen tissue on the cryostat, or the freeze microtome. I want to introduce our guest speaker, Catherine McLeod, um, and give a little background on her experience. She's been working in anatomic pathology since the year 2007. She attended Boston University School of Medicine and received a master's in pathology, graduating in 2010. She then attended Quinnipiac University Pathologist Assistant Program, graduating in 2013 with a master's in health science. Currently, she works for South Shore Hospital as a pathologist assistant, and previously, she was an anatomic pathology supervisor at Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital in Milton, Massachusetts, where she worked for six years. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Catherine to jump right in and talking about frozen section on the cryostat machine and how to section tissue on the apparatus. Tissue triage and sample preparation. Tissue must be fresh and not fixed in formalin. I frequently like to dab my tissue before I embed and freeze it in case it's come down soaked in saline or is wet. When selecting the appropriate tissue section for your specimen, you wanna consider your tissue type. Is it a skin? Is it a membranous tissue? Is it fatty? Is it large? Is it small? Is this a margin you'll be freezing? Do you need to conserve tissue? Ideal tissue sections are between three to five millimeters thick. Consider the size of the embedding well and the chuck that you're going to be using. Some tissues can be cut into strips and oriented on the same chuck. Larger tissue, for example, a full thickness uterine section where you're looking to demonstrate the extent of cancer invasion, a full thickness section can be large. So you want to bisect your tissue and either place on two chucks or lay them next to each other in thin sections. Permanent sections are preferred for diagnosing cancer, so you wanna make sure you're selecting the appropriate tissue for freezing. In some cases, for example, if you're using a margin, like a ureter margin, you're going to freeze the whole tissue. If you have a long wedge with a tumor, just a rem representative section of the tumor would be appropriate. If you have a bronchial lymph node, you would typically bisect half, use one half for frozen, the other half for permanent or touch preps. You also need to consider if you need to conserve any tissue for ancillary studies like flow cytometry, microbiology, cytogenetics. When embedding, again, it's important to consider what type of tissue you're going to be cutting. I like to use non-serrated smooth forceps so that there's no carryover or contamination. For skin specimens, I like to line them up and orient them on their side. Strips of membranous tissue, like an ovary or gallbladder, should also be oriented on their side. A ureter margin for frozen section, make sure you're placing the correct side down so that will face the blade and that, was, that will be the side you're cutting into. Sometimes placing a dab of ink on the tissue is helpful. Small tissue, you could also place a dab of eosin so that you can see it. Are you going to be using embedding wells or pre-filled chucks with the OCT? There are pros and cons to both. The embedding cryo wells are nice because you can use OCT to help orient your tissue. You place your tissue directly onto the metal well and then place the OCT on top, filling up the well just enough. You don't want to overflow the well. If this happens while the OCT is still wet and not frozen, you can use some gauze and wipe around the periphery. The chuck then goes face down onto the OCT and you place a free weight on it. I personally like these for embedding because the tissue all comes out on an even plane and is best with smaller tissue. The ones I have used are square and I like the square shape of the chucks because I use the pointed end to line up with my blade and then I grab that ribbon first. However, the downside to this option is getting the weight off the chuck. The ones I've used have been freestanding and you sort of need to bang it to get it off. On occasion, the chuck comes off from the OCT and you have to add more re-embed and wait. Usually frozen sections in the hospital setting are time sensitive and this can be a delay. I don't use the cryo spray on my chucks because of, it's an aerosol and too much risk with infectious diseases. 
using the pre-chilled and pre-filled chucks is nice because they are ready to go. You place your tissue directly onto the chuck and add the OCT and then carefully place your heat extractor on top of the chuck. It's important to line up the heat extractor directly over your tissue so you don't get, get so you do not get an uneven shaped OCT face. I like to place my tissue a little off center so I leave myself some room to grab the ribbon when I'm cutting. I have found that the downside to these is you can often get an uneven face. If the tissue is thick, it creates a layered effect and there's not a lot of extra OCT along the periphery from cutting. Often when you get that layered thick effect, it can fall off of the chuck when you're cutting. Also when using small tissue, the chuck can be really cold from sitting in the chamber and it will freeze faster. You might have to warm up your tissue section with your finger before you, before you take a ribbon. One tip using the heat extractors is to place some lubricating oil on the bottom to prevent it from sticking to your chuck. In the event this happens, I have used forceps in my warm hand to pry it off. You just need to be patient. The ideal chamber and cutting temperature is between minus 18 to minus 27 degrees Celsius. The preferred temperature depends on the type of tissue you are cutting. What is the most common tissue you're going to be freezing? Freezing. Routine hospital specimens like lymph nodes, tissue cores, you're probably going to want it somewhere in between 21 to 22 degrees. Smaller tissue doesn't take as long to freeze, while larger tissue takes longer, like fatty tissue. I prefer to have mine on the colder side, and I warm up my tissue sections again with my finger before I take them. I currently keep mine around 24, 25. Um, I, I don't use the cryo spray. And for fatter tissue, it will cut better on the colder side. So you wanna remember your techniques for embedding. This depends on the tissue type, the size and tissue conservation. I keep forceps right on my cryostat to assist me with embedding. I use the OCT to help me orient my specimens and consider what type of chuck you will be embedding with. I like the OCT to still slightly be soft when I take off the heat extractor. And practicing with non-essential tissue will really help you get the hang of it. I have prepared three short demo videos on embedding, which goes over a lot of what I just touched on. I'm going to be demonstrating different types of embedding technique, as well as triaging tissue, selecting the appropriate tissue for frozen section. I have four different tissues here that you would commonly encounter for frozen section. I have a piece of skin. I have some membranous tissue from an ovary. I have larger tissue, which could be from a uterus. And I have, again, some membranous fatty tissue from like a lymph node. I will start with the skin. For skin frozen sections, the tissue can often be very small. And you can have several pieces of tissue which need to be embedded. The technique I have found which works best is using OCT to help embedding. If you have embedding wells or if you have pre-chilled chucks, I will go over the advantage of both. Currently, I use pre-chilled chucks in OCT and I will demonstrate that. I like to bring the chucks right to my bench side so that I'm not carrying tissue around the laboratory. I place a little OCT compound and dip each tissue and hold it down how I like it to be embedded. Often, two sets of forceps 
can be helpful to line the tissue up. As you can see, the tissue skin strips are lined up. So be able to place this in the cryostat and get a nice even ribbon with all of the tissue in line. I've then found it's best to add the OCT compound. First in between the skin strips and then around the strips. It almost supports the tissue first and it gives you more of an even plane for cutting. If you were doing this in an embedding well, you would again, dip your strips in the OCT and then place it down in the embedding well. Again, lining the tissue up, how you would like it to be oriented. Then placing the OC OCT compound over the tissue and placing a weighted, the chuck on top and then a weighted weight on top of that. It gives you a more even cutting surface and a little thinner OCT. Next, I will go into strips. This is membranous tissue from an ovary. We frequently see this specimen in the hospital setting for frozen section. You can either cut thin strips or I find using scissors also can be helpful. Here are a few strips. I commonly will use between two and three strips for each frozen section. Again, I like to place OCT compound, dip the strips and place them on my pre-chilled chuck. It takes a long time. You may also place it back in the cryostat to freeze and really get it solidified down on the chuck before you place more OCT compound. Again, I like to first place it between the tissue and then around the tissue. I feel it gives a better even plane for sectioning. You don't want to place too much OCT just enough and remember it will get flattened. For large tissue, the important thing to remember is the thickness of the tissue. I say usually around three millimeters, no thicker than five. This would be an okay section. For larger tissue, I prefer using a larger pre-chilled chuck. I frequently will either warm it with my hand briefly, or again, dip the tissue in the OCT, and then embed the tissue. It's best to try to either embed it centrally or a little off to one side, so you'll have enough of a base to grab a ribbon when you're sectioning. For larger tissue, I first fill the edges, surround the tissue, and then place it on the top. <laughs> 
This prevents it from creating too much of a large base and having to section into the tissue. This is some fatty tissue, possible lymph node. I section the tissue into roughly even sections. Again, using a pre-chilled chuck. And I prefer the OCT compound for embedding. I like to place my tissue. evenly spaced along the chuck. If you're using small tissue and you are concerned about losing it within the OCT compound, you can also place the drop of eosin, which will then show up nicely. to place the OCT in between the tissue and then surround it. This will provide a nice base for sectioning. Those are the basics for embedding. Skin strips, small tissue, larger tissue, going to be demonstrating. Sorry, I'm moving to the next slide. This is embedding with the heat extractor. I have a short little video demonstrating moving the heat extractor over, lining it up on the chuck, and then placing it slowly down on the chuck. The picture on the left is an example of using a heat extractor and just letting it freeze on its own. On the right, you can see the OCT is flattened and smooth face. That is with the heat extractor. And on the left, you have your chuck with the OCT frozen just by itself, which kind of creates this mound. Often I found that it increases your chance of that falling off when you're sectioning into it and you have less room to grab the OCT. Here's another example with embedding with the heat extractor. On the left, you can see the nice smooth plane and the large amount of OCT. The tissue is about just in the middle. On the right, there's two examples. The one the picture on the left is with the no heat extractor. You could see the OCT has ran over the side a little bit. You'd wanna break that off before you would put that on the cold head. And on the right, not enough OCT and how it's kind of built up on this mound. Again, I found that sometimes that increases your chances of it falling off when you're sectioning. Cryosectioning. When placing your chuck on the cold head, you need to consider the orientation of the tissue you're going to be cutting. I like to examine my chuck after I've embedded it and select the best side to face down towards the blade. This is usually the side with more OCT, so I have a little room to grab my ribbon or if I'm cutting skin specimens, I want the epidermis to hit the blade first. If you're cutting fibroadipose tissue, if you can pick the fibrous areas to hit the blade first, your tissue will tend to cut better. Adipose tissue does not cut well and it can be difficult to get a section. Depending on the type of cryostat you're using depends on how you place the chuck on the cold head. I've used the screw ones where you turn the screw to place the chuck in on the head and then turn the screw so it secures on the chuck. The one in the picture I've used has a ledge that the chuck sits on and you use a lever. 
you need to make sure there isn't any residual OCT on the bottom or the sides because it will prevent the chuck from evenly lying and then cutting unevenly. You want to remove the blade protector and unlock the hand wheel. There's either an automatic or manual advance option. If you're using an automatic advance, I bring my chuck down halfway to line up with the blade and then hit the advance button. I personally like these best because it goes quickly and does a really nice job of lining up your chuck for you. If you're using the manual advance, I slowly advance the chuck to the blade, not touching it just before. Use the trim setting on your cryostat to fully face the tissue while you're simultaneously turning the wheel. You don't wanna to go too fast or too slow. You want the turning motion to be continuous. This is a very important step to pay attention to especially when cutting smaller tissue. You don't wanna cut into the tissue too much where you don't have any of it left. When you freeze tissue, it often takes the color of the OCT compound and you can easily cut through it. As soon as I'm just into the tissue, I change the setting to section or I deselect the trim option. Keep in mind most cryostats, the first turn on the section is actually still a trim. You want to section into the tissue about two to three more times until you're confident that the thickness is correct. I trim at about 25 microns and I section at about six. Um, the recommended trimming usually is between 20 to 40 and cutting is four to seven. The motto that I live by when I'm doing frozen sections is you can always take away more as cut into the chuck more, but you can't put back. Once the tissue is gone, it's gone. Um, you brush away all of the trimming so that you have a clean area to work on. You use a small fine tip paintbrush with firm bristles to grab your curl. The brush should be held like a pen and you can rest your fifth finger on the anti-roll plate. You always need to pay attention to how close your hand is to the blade. They're extremely sharp. I've actually cut myself trying to move my chuck and forgot to lock the head. And trust me, they're very sharp. Some people like to cut their brushes at an angle since you kind of hold it at a little bit of an angle. I personally just like a firm short brush. Turn the wheel continuously without stopping and slowly grab your ribbon curl. As you turn the wheel, you delicately pull the curl along the anti-roll plate towards you. You want the brush to keep pace with the block. When the curl is just barely still attached, I grab my pre-labeled charge slides and gently place them over the curl. You don't want to pull too much or you'll tear, tear your section. And then the tissue section will melt onto the slide. I've gotten really great ribbon sections before and then gone wrong at the last step when I'm trying to place my slide on top of it. You want it to be place it evenly on the tissue because it melts up onto the tissue. If it's too high or too far away, it will wrinkle onto the slide. Your frozen section slide should then immediately go into alcohol. And this is a very important step to prevent drying artifact. You can then take a deeper level or your second level, returning to trimming about three to seven turns and then back to sectioning. I'm going to briefly go over blades and knife angles. The optimal knife angle for cutting depends on a few different factors. The type of blade you're using, low profile versus high profile, the cryostat manufacturer's recommendation and the type of tissue you are cutting. Blades have a bevel angle, which is the top of the blade point. The sturdier the blade, the wider the bevel angle is at the top. The thinner blades tend to be less sturdy, have smaller angles, but are, have sharper blades. There's also the clearance angle, which is the angle between the front of the chuck and the blade. Most manufacturer recommendations are between three and eight, but again, it depends on the cryostat that you're cutting on. The lower the angle, the higher the sharpness, but the less sturdy blade. Higher angles have more sturdy blade, but less sharpness. The ideal perfect angle really depends on the blade you're using and the tissue type. I've personally always used low profile blades, which are thinner than the high profile and dull quicker, but I find that for routine frozen sections, they work great you need to change your blade more often. And the high profile ones are sharper and are often used more when you're cutting bone or cartilaginous tissue. You don't want the angle to be too shallow or too steep. 
it can cause the blade to vibrate against the chuck and create shatter. Most microtones with low profile blades work best when you're cutting around five to six microns. The cryostat I'm currently using now has a setting between zero and 10. I think I'm slightly over five. What is crucial is that the type of blade you're using is what the knife holder is designed for. I don't really ever change the setting. And I found that when people have adjusted it, it can really throw off the sectioning of the tissue. People have confused the blade lever for the clearance angle one and adjusted them incorrectly. So to find the best clearance angle, you wanna read your manufacturer's manual, consider your blade preference, test out your microtome and think of the type of tissue that you're going to be cutting. The next slide is on cryosectioning demo, going over the topics that I just discussed. I will now be demonstrating some techniques for cryosectioning. I've already embedded my tissue on a pre-filled chuck with a weight. One tip for using the weights is if you place a little oil on the bottom, it prevents it from sticking to your OCT. I like to freeze my chuck so it is still a little gooey and not too cold. In this case, I've used skin, which I previously embedded. I like to place my chuck on the cold head here at an angle. So the epidermal surface will be first hitting the blade. Any subcutaneous tissue does not cut well. Another important when you're placing your chuck on here is to make sure there's no OCT on the lip. Again, I place it at an angle and I like to leave a little bit of OCT between my tissue and the blade. So I'll be able to grab the ribbon curl. After I place it in the freezing chamber, I will unlock the hand wheel. Some machines have automatic versus manual advance. I like to trim into the tissue using 25 microns. Once you have faced the tissue, you can select the sectioning, which I like to section my tissue around six microns. And I will turn the wheel about five to 10 more times without advancing. When you are ready to grab your section, clear the curl plate and all of the ribbons. I prefer a stiff, short, pre-chilled brush. You want to grab the edge of the ribbon as you turn the wheel. Avoid trying to go too slow or too fast. You want a continuous motion. You should hold the brush like a pen and you can rest your fifth finger on the cold plate. Keeping the ribbon taut, you want to avoid too much pressure and you don't want to tear. If you pull too much, you'll create a tear and you'll lose your ribbon. That occurs. I do between two and three more turns. <laughs> 
leave a little edge attached to the chuck and I gently place my slide onto the ribbon curl and then immediately place my slide in alcohol. You can advance into the tissue more to get your second level. Another technique is to take your ribbon and raise back up and place your slide gently against the chuck. If you're finding that your tissue is shredding too much, you can warm the section quickly before you take your next curl. Then get a very nice ribbon. Some doctors prefer you take multiple levels on one slide. I will quickly demonstrate this technique. You want to use the end of the slide. Place it in alcohol solution just at the bottom where you placed your tissue onto the slide, not the whole slide. You take your next level, slowly advancing down. You take your slide that's only half dipped in the alcohol and you place your second level on the undipped part. So you will have two levels on one slide. When you're done, you wanna make sure you lock your hand wheel. Place your safety blade and back on the chamber. I'll briefly go over basic staining of H and E. All your solutions should be fresh, rotated, and changed frequently. This is a typical solution order. However, they can vary slightly. Once you have your frozen section slides, you wanna place them directly into alcohol, again, to prevent that drying artifact. You place your slides in hematoxylin for about a minute. Um, if you agitate your slides, you can do about 45 seconds. You then rinse your slides in water for about five to eight seconds, usually um, slow running water. You then dip them in a lithium carbonate or the aqueous bluing ammonia for about five to eight dips. You then place in 95% alcohol for about 20 dips, eosin for about 10 dips, and then you do 95% alcohol for about five to 10 dips, three cycles of 100% for about five dips, and then you have two cycles of xylene or citrosol. The last container of xylene, you can keep your slides sitting in there while you're cover slipping. You add your mounting media. I use one to two drops maximum. I place the cover slip on the slide and then I wipe the bottom of the slide. You don't wanna press down too hard and you can gently push out any air bubbles. I use forceps or the end of an eraser. Um, I tend to try not to use my gloves because they can be wet or sticky. You also wanna make sure that your slides are pre-labeled. That way you don't cover slip or wipe down the wrong side of the slide, which I have done. We'll go over some troubleshooting, technical issues. If your blade isn't lying flat in the blade holder lip or isn't tight in the holder, it can have some movement and it will cut unevenly and create chatter. This has happened to me more times than I can say where you think your blade is in there when you've changed it and you quickly learn that something is wrong. I've had the blade hit my chuck and chunk off the majority of the OCT and tissue. You always wanna check your micrometer display to make sure that the cutting thickness hasn't been changed since the last time it was used. 
this is probably a good idea in the research lab if you're sharing cryostats with other technicians. If your chuck isn't lying flat in the cold head holder, you will have an uneven cutting surface. This can be due to the OCT on the bottom of the chuck or the chuck isn't securely, isn't secured properly and there is gonna be movement. Um, again, this could be if you haven't screwed it in tight enough. If you really, you really want clean chucks before you start, it's important to make sure that they're also dry. If you have any residual water, that can cause your OCT to crack. On a few occasions, I've had my chuck crack in the middle of a frozen, and really the only thing you can do is put it back together with new OCT and start again. I won't get too much into staining troubleshooting during this discussion, but the thickness of your tissue can impact your staining quality. If you're cutting super thick se sections, you may want to adjust your hematoxylin and eosin times. You're going to want clean and fresh solutions. If your alcohols have become diluted, it can affect the staining quality. It's very important to place your frozen section slide directly into the alcohol so you don't get drying artifact and don't rush the cycle. The timing is important. It's also very important to keep your cryostat clean. It should be cleaned with 95% alcohol and the ribbon shavings should be wiped away before you take a section. You don't want any floaters or debris on your slide. Never use water, it creates ice crystals and can leave a film. And make sure you're regularly getting maintenance done at least a yearly PM. For some artifacts, the temperature, if your temperature is too cold, you can get ribbon shatter. I will warm up the chuck with my finger for about five seconds and then take a section. If your temperature is too warm, you won't be able to get a ribbon. The chuck will just melt along your blade as you're trying to take a section. This actually happens a lot because you open the chamber to embed the tissue. And if you leave the door open, the chamber loses its temperature. You're going to need to close the door, leave the chuck in place on the cold head and try back again in about 30 seconds or a minute. If your ribbon curl is getting stuck on the anti-roll plate, the plate may be too warm. So you're gonna to wanna to close the lid on the cryostat and wait, or your anti-roll plate might need to be cleaned, wiped down. Knife artifact can be caused by a few different things. If your blade isn't properly secured or if you're using a dull blade, a sharp blade is really important. This is one of the first things that I change if I'm encountering cutting issues. I've seen some places use a new blade for each different case. I personally change mine about every two to three cases. Um, obviously, if you're cutting hard tissue, you wanna change it after every case. You can get a nick in your blade, which will cause this linear tear along the ribbon and you can't get a complete curl. Depending on where the tear is, is how I approach troubleshooting this during a frozen. If it's in the middle of the tissue, you're going to need to change the blade. The downfall to this is that the blade will be room temperature unless you're keeping them in your cold chamber. And if the tear is on the periphery above or below the tissue, I try to turn the angle of the chuck and then reface it. If you have small tissue, you need to be careful when cutting into it more. You don't want to exhaust the tissue. Um, and again, check your knife angle to make sure it hasn't been adjusted. Ice crystals. This can be due to slow freezing or water contamination. Make sure your chuck is completely dry and the tissue you are freezing isn't wet. Smaller tissue freezes faster and tends to have less crystal artifact. Larger tissue is slower. You wanna make sure your tissue sections are of appropriate size. And it's really old school and I haven't seen this in a long time, but using liquid nitrogen is the best way to flash freeze your tissue for this type of artifact. Air bubbles, these can be in the OCT themselves or trapped under cover slips. When you're embedding and using OCT, you wanna make sure there's no air bubbles present on your chuck. I often pop these or move them with my forceps before the OCT freezes. And if you're cutting the tip of your OCT bottle, make sure you're not cutting it too low. If you cut it too low, it introduces too much air when you squeeze the bottle. And then when cover slipping, don't use more than two drops of the mounting media. The closer you are when you lay the cover slip on the glass, the less air bubbles you'll get. You always want fresh media. And when I place gently place my cover glass, I like to do it starting at one side, a little bit of an angle. For fatty tissues like lymph nodes, breast, or skin, these are often difficult to cut. Um, 
bloody tissue like the spleen or edematous tissue can also be difficult. It's very important to have cold temperatures. This is why I like to keep my cryostat a little bit more on the cold side. Um, you can also try increasing your cutting thickness from about six microns to eight microns if you can't get a section. Um, the colder the temperature, the fresher the blade and increasing your thickness will really help. If it's a skin specimen, I try to line up my chuck so the epidermal surface hits the blade first. Um, try to dissect away any of the fat if you can um, and, tr and try to avoid having the fat being the first thing that hits your blade. Lastly, you wanna make sure that you aren't cutting too slow. If you go too slow, the fatty tissue will curl up and create holes. You want that continuous motion with the hand wheel and pulling the curl towards you. And lastly, which one of my mentors taught me in PA school is to keep calm and carry on. Um, just keep practicing and hopefully everyone will get proficient in cutting frozen sections. I want to thank Abby and Precisionary Instruments for this opportunity to discuss frozen section procedure and techniques and I'm happy to take any questions. Great, thank you so much, Catherine. We actually have a question right here in the chat box, which is, what percentage of alcohol do you recommend using um, in the step where you uh, um, adhere the slice to the glass slide and then dip it into alcohol? 95% alcohol. Got it. Thank you. And for those of you who are attending our webinar, please feel free to unmute yourselves and ask questions if you have any. Um, we're going to open up the floor for Q&A. Oh, so we have a question here again. Um, somebody asked, what's the best way to freeze brain tissue? And actually many of our attendees are neuroscientists. So can you talk specifically a little bit about um, using the cryostat to cut both fixed and fresh brain tissue? It's best to have it at a colder temperature. If you can be lucky enough to have a tumor in your brain tissue, um, tumor cells will cut better, um, but if it's benign brain tissue, um, keeping it on the keeping your cryostat on the colder side, around 25 degrees, um, in using a fresh blade, and try increasing your cutting thickness. Got it. And typically, what thicknesses do you um, recommend for uh, brain tissue? I bump mine up to about eight eight microns. Okay. Got it. So uh, relatively thicker than the very thin um, um, uh, roll slices that you've been talking about. If it's cutting, if it's cutting, okay. I mean, you'll start to know once you cut into it and you try to take your first ribbon, you'll see if it's curling up or not. Um, you know, I, I try to start around six and I bump it up maybe one every, you know, if I have enough tissue. Got it. And then we have another question. Um, somebody asked, um, I have, uh, I work with peripheral myelinated nerve samples. Um, any suggestions on how to freeze a sample like that? Um, are you cutting them into, you have like an elongated piece of tissue, which you're cutting them into smaller sections. You probably want to embed and orient them on their side mm -hmm. so that you can have a good cross section of the tissue. Uh -huh. Um, this person says that they're specifically experiencing ice crystals on the frozen block because they're freezing with isopentane. So due to like the slow freezing of the tissue, um, you're going to want to try to like flash snap freeze it. Um, you can try the liquid nitrogen. Um, you know, you want to make sure that maybe your cryostat's too warm. Are you closing your lid? Um, things like that can try to help reduce the ice crystal artifact. Um, you don't want to freeze fragments larger than the diameter of the chuck. Um, you try, try blotting the outer surface with some gauze before you do it. Got it. So lower temperature um, for cutting brain samples, including peripheral nerve is key. Oh, for brain samples, I would know I would do colder temperatures. Colder temperature, right. So, so lower. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? And here we go. Um, somebody says, um, I have a uh, formalin fixed brain tissue and sometimes I, ha I make uh, nice straight sections, but when they pick up the section with a slide, the section will have folds in them. 
I guess it's a, um, you know, when you use a slice, a, a glass slide to get the section to adhere to it, you then get folds. Any suggestions for how to avoid that? Uh, that happens a lot. You'll get the perfect ribbon and then you go to put the slide and it can fold. You want to make sure you're still holding your ribbon tight enough, not too much where you tear it. And then gently, you want you don't want to be putting your slide down onto the ribbon at an angle. You want to do it completely evenly because it will roll up. I've also blown on my slide a little bit to warm it up. The difference in the temperature, it will bring it up almost a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Great. And somebody asked, um, can you state again which bluing agents you use for H and E? Yes, I can. Um, we use the ammonium or I can go back to that slide, okay. the lithium carbonate. I guess I didn't have that written down. But those are the two. Um, I believe it's a 0.2%. Okay, can you say that one more time, Catherine? Yes. So we use a lithium carbonate or a 0.2% aqueous ammonia. Okay, excellent. And then somebody asked if they're working with fixed tissue, actually, can you freeze it and then embed it? Or um, do you, would you embed it and then freeze it? I haven't worked a lot with fixed formalin tissue. We usually actually reject those frozen sections because they mm -hmm. don't freeze well. And in the hospital setting, you're looking for cancer diagnosing. Um, so I just, I don't know a lot to talk on that. Got it. Um, so somebody did ask, can you repeat the um, key uh, points you made for preventing section curling? Um, I, I think in the interest of time, I just want to say that this webinar will be recorded. Um, it is recorded and we will post it. So you can always go back um, and, and, and see um, or hear Catherine's points about how to prevent section curling. But, you know, Catherine, it's just, we have just a few minutes. Do you want to just uh, summarize the main points for, prevent, for preventing tissue curling? Yes. So your tissue can curl if it's fatty or it's too cold. I often will place my finger on my chuck and warm it up for about five to 10 seconds. I find that helps a lot um, with the curling. And also um, if it's curling up on your slide, again, placing your slide evenly onto your curl and not at an angle and possibly blowing on your slide. You wanna charge slide before you put it down onto your ribbon curl. Excellent, thank you. Um, and then somebody asked, um, after sectioning, how long do they dip the slide in 95% alcohol? Um, I usually keep them in there just the time that I'm walking from my cryostat to the, the um, like staining line. So it's usually between 10 and 15 seconds. It can stay in there, you know, up to a minute is fine. Excellent. So, so not that long. You're not like incubating it in alcohol overnight or anything. No. And then um, somebody asked, can you store the slides directly at negative 80 degrees Celsius? So storing slides after you dip it in alcohol and um, for long term in really cold temperatures. I, again, I don't know. I've not come across that. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Talk on that. No problem. All right. So on that note, I wanna thank um, Catherine McLeod, our guest speaker for taking us through step-by-step -step how to section tissues on the cryostat with the demo videos that you've taken of real life action. Um, so thank you so much for your time and for all of our attendees. We have recorded this webinar and we will make it available to everybody. It'll be on our website and we'll send out a notification as well. On that note, thank you very much and um, have a great week, everyone.